So now let's look at bringing those models into Maya. If we look in our Finder window here, there are two STL files, the one for bone and one for skin. And these are the ones that we will import into Maya. So you can see the preview of them here showing what they are. Now you can see they're sort of floating in a weird way, and we're going to have to correct that in Maya as well. So this is what we'll see in Maya eventually once we fix everything and organize our scene. Um, so let's start with a new scene. So I'll save that. It's a pretty big scene because of the density of the meshes, so it takes a while to save. So when we open Maya, we'll just go straight to File and Import. Now these are STL files, um, so the files of type, if you set to all files, then they'll be available to, to bring in. I've done this a couple times, so let me just find the most recent one here. AD Chimp Slicer. Hmm. Okay, so I'll bring in the bone first to see if this works. Again, we're getting the spinning ball here because the uh, file is quite large. So it's finished. I don't see anything until you move around a little bit and you'll see that it's kind of off in the distance here. Now when you're in Maya and you want to see everything that's in the scene, you can just hit A on the keyboard and it will focus on everything. If I twin, turn around here, so this little dark spot, that's our grid in the middle of the world. So the first thing I want to do, well, first thing I want to do actually is figure out why this thing is all black. The reason it's all black is, is that essentially it's been turned inside out. And so we have to fix that uh, before we do anything else. But before we move this model, so don't move the model at all. We have to bring in the skin too because it will match this and then we'll move them together and they'll be, uh, they will be aligned to each other. So if I just select the model, you can see there's all this extra stuff around here. But we just have to fix it, turn it inside out. So up here in the upper left, I can see I have my modeling menu set open. If you don't see that, you can just go to modeling here. And under mesh display at the top, we just want to go to reverse. So that's reversing the direction of the model. So if I click away from it now, you can see that that looks fine. So again, before I do anything else, I am going to import skin in the right spot so skin STL and this will also take a little while so like I say when we export from Maya or uh, from slicer these things should be aligned so we don't want to move them until uh, we have both of them in place and then we'll group them together and move them and by grouping them together anything we change about the scale or rotation or positioning uh, will be uh, it will affect both of the models that exist within that group so now we just have to wait but you can see that's quite a good model um, that we've extracted from here so it should hopefully pop right here perfect again this one is reversed too so I am going to select that and do the same thing. Mesh display reverse. Okay. There we go. That looks good. So now let's look at what we've got here. 
So this is called the outliner, this window I have open. If you don't see this, you can go to Windows Outliner and it will open up. And this shows you everything you have in your scene. So we've got the uh, adult chimp bone, adult chimp skin. See, it's not selecting it. So there's a little plus mark here and we want to extract these models and sort of clean up the file a little bit. So if I hold down shift and click on the X here, it will open all of them. And the actual model is this thing called transform at the bottom. So I want to select it with my left mouse button and then my middle mouse button. I want to drag it up until it, you can see when it's on top of uh, another item, uh, the dotted line goes around the item. I want to move up until that dotted line is just a straight line across and it just removes it from that group. Now I can remove, just delete that group that it came from do the same thing here with this one, select transform one, move that up, and then delete this. Now let's rename these things before we go any farther. So this one is the adult chimp skin. This one is the adult chimp bone. So now before I try to move them, I just want to select both of them and go to Edit Group. And now this is just a new group that has both of them. I'll just call this one Adult Group. Now when you select yours, it might, hi it might highlight everything. Some of my settings are slightly different. But let's navigate out a little bit. So remember, holding down Option, right, right mouse button, we can zoom in and out. Left mouse button with Option held down can tumble around. And middle mouse button can allow us to move around. So if I select this group, and if I want to move it, I can press W on the keyboard. And you can see its pivot point is actually not in the model. So to fix this, we have to go to the Modify menu and say Center Pivot. Okay, so now the pivot's in the middle, so if I move the group, it's actually moving both of those models. Now we want to move this to the middle of the world here, and if you look up in the top line of all of these commands up here, all the way over here, you'll see something that looks like this. Mine says X, Y, Z. Yours may look something like this, or select by name. We want to go to absolute transform and just type in, no, I have to have this thing selected. So the group has to be selected here in the outliner and then type in zero, zero. You can hit tab to go between these boxes and zero and hit return. And it pops to the middle of the world, zero, zero, zero in this universe that we're in here. That's good so far. Now let's just sort of rotate this into position. So E goes into rotate mode, and if I select any of these rings, it will lock my rotation into that axis. This blue ring, the light blue ring, locks it into the axis of my view. So we just want to use the red ring for now to rotate it so it's sort of facing forward. If we go into our other windows here, our other panels, so we can see from the side here, from the front here. Now you can see it's not facing the front of the model. Um, so we're going to turn it around in a second. But before we do that, let's just do something called freezing its transformations. You can see how the rotation axes are kind of wonky now, but if we go to modify freeze transformations, it will zero out this stuff and it makes it easier just to turn along a standard axis. Now you can see the whole thing is kind of getting cut off in our view here. It's because it's such a big model. So let's just change this rotation to 180 here. Again, we're just doing this on an adult group. Do not make these changes to the individual objects within the group. Let's change the scale of the entire adult group to 10% of its original size. So in scale X, I can type 0.1. In scale Y, I can type 0.1. And 
and scale Z. I can also type 0 0.1. Now I've hit A on the keyboard here with my mouse over the perspective view. Now we can see our model a little more clearly. And I just want to Oops. So if you don't select on one of those lines, you can freely rotate and it will go sort of off kilter. So I just wanted to make sure I'm selecting the blue line to sort of align it in the front. And the again, I'm going to freeze the transformations before I do anything else. Because you can see that the red line is now not really centered anymore. If I go to modify, freeze transformations, it just pops those back to zero, and I can easily change this. So we've got it roughly in place. In the next video, we'll come back, and we will get it in a good anatomical position using the Frankfurt horizontal, then also clean up the models.